I order the meeting of the Greenwood Common Council on Monday, August the 16th. If you wouldn't please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. And after the pledge, please remain standing. And we let in prayer this evening by Reverend Bert Kite, the interim minister at Prince of Peace United Church of Christ. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. O oh God of all peoples, we gather tonight as we've done on so many other nights before to do the people's business, to make sound decisions which improve our life together, to enhance the common good of our city, which we all love. And we ask that you would empower us to dare to be forward looking so that all who will pass this way after us will know we were working to create an even better community for them. Oh God, since 1864, you have watched over and blessed this place we call Greenwood, our beloved home. You've sent faithful public servants like our first mayor, Wayne Burkhardt, who lived up the street from me, and all those mayors after him who have led us. And we thank you also for our current mayor, Mark, who desires to lead and guide our city into an even brighter future. Oh God, especially tonight, we Pray for this city council and their president, Mike Campbell. Ask that your wisdom will guide them in the decisions they must render. Tonight, we're also mindful of all those who are working in other parts of our city. We pray for the safety of our police officers and firefighters. And we thank you for all others who labor on behalf of our residents, for city planners and attorneys, for those who care for our parks, streets and public grounds and for those city employees whose work continues to serve the people of Greenwood every day of the year. So we give you thanks, eternal God, for all those who have passed this way before us and for those presently serving who have caused us as a community to prosper. We thank you for their sincere efforts to create a community where persons of all ages and races are now welcome. So, dear God, we express our gratitude for those who lead and serve our city. So then, finally, oh God, we pray for wisdom tonight for this common council, which must render decisions on very specific and sometimes complex and ambiguous issues. May they discern what is best for this community, and may you guide them in their decisions. All these things we pray, O oh God, in your name. And all of God's people together say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Roll call. Bates. Present. Campbell. Here. Don. Here. Gibson. Here. Hill. Here. Hopper. Here. Hudson. Here. Middleton. Here. And Williams. We do have a quorum with uh, eight members present, uh, seven members present, one member virtual and one member absent. All of you should receive copies of the minutes from our regular meeting of August the 2nd. Do I have a motion? That's the move. Second, what's the Mr. Bates? Second, Mr. Dine. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, then roll call on the minutes. Bates? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Dine? Aye. Gibson, Hill, Aye. Hopper, Aye. Lexi, Aye. Pendleton, Aye. And Williams is absent. Minutes are approved on a vote of eight to zero. Reports, Corporation Council. All should have seen the item to my motion, which was uh, posted to Sheriff Hall. It says there was a litigation report, but there was not one for this meeting. I think we'll have the next time around. So if you have questions about the item to my motion, Please contact me. All right. Any uh, questions at this time? All right. Anything from the controller? Not at this time. Uh, the committee of board reports this time. Uh, as I sent you all an email, told you that I was not able to attend the last REC meeting, but I did send you copies of the minutes. If you have any questions, um, you might want to ask Mr. Hopper. So 
any other committee or board reports? All right, hearing none, then this is an opportunity for public comments. If you're here tonight, uh, either in person or online, which address the council concerning items that are on the agenda, this is your opportunity. So if you wish to do so, please step forward to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Hello, how are you doing tonight? Uh, my name is Ilona Corcoran. I live on 2915 Beckenham Way in Greenwood. That's the Stone Village subdivision. And I'm here tonight to address um, the drainage of the sports farm and Ellis farm. I pass out an email to everyone, yellow and orange highlighted. Um, I was at a meeting four years ago with the planning for mis mission and build peoples and had a chance to talk to Bill and was surprised that they did not know how much water is flowing from the sports farm and Ellis farm into our neighborhood. It's like about 80 acres of rainwater runoff and it floods my neighborhood. When we have wet, heavy rain, we flood and sometimes we flood severely. We have between sometimes two and three water, three feet water in the street, and it also floods some homes. Um, we tried a lot of different ways to approach the problem since the subdivision was built. The subdivision is in a depression. Everybody around us sits on higher ground, so we get water from the north side of Stones Crossing, the Mount Auburn Church, from the subdivision south of us, Stones Bay, which is east of us, and then most of all comes from the Swartz and Ellis Farm. And if you look at the email, you see when the subdivision was developed, the engineers calculated like 39 acres of runoff water, but we get about 176. So that's four and a half times as much water as the engineers thought. And the result is we flood. Um, when Franciscan Health was built and the new pond was put in, that did make a difference. And we were thankful, it really is the flooding. We don't flood as often, but it's still not enough. Um, about six weeks ago, we had heavy rain and I had two feet of water in my backyard, which means at that time, the pond was full and the overflow just poured in our, into our neighborhood. Um, reading that in this new development, the pond will be enlarged, that's terrific. But I still think it's not enough. We are hoping that as the development moves forward with apartments and businesses, that maybe additional smaller ponds can be added, or maybe underground storage tanks for the runoff water like they did at the Goodwill store. And our hope is that some of the water from Ellis and Sports Farm can be taken south to Honey Creek instead of letting everything <coughs> flow west. We're hoping that's a possibility. Um, I think the Planning Commission or whoever is responsible should be able to make some changes there for power and knowledge. And I would really nicely ask you to consider changes like that. It would tremendously help our neighborhood. Right. That's basically it. Right, thank, you. thank you for listening. Yes, thank you. All right, anyone else wants to address the council at this time? Good evening. Um, my name is Derek Snyder. I'm with Crossroad Engineers. We're here on behalf of Schwartz Crossing Development uh, to request or 
excuse me, to present our petition to uh, vacate uh, some of the plan easements in the Sports Crossing commercial Sorry, subdivision. I hate to interrupt you, but yes, it would be better if you waited until the ordinance came up and then we'll be having a public hearing at that time as well. Okay, well, I have an opportunity to address uh, with the previous comments. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a public hearing, so anybody can speak and you can address what you've right. already raised and issues. And yeah. you can speak again as well. Yeah. Yeah, it would it'd just be better if you did it at that time. Okay. Great. Thank All right. you. Thanks. All right. Anyone else in the audience? All right. Seeing that, then moving on to ordinances and resolutions. First reading, ordinance 2129. And ordinance amending chapter six, article 10 of the Greenway Municipal Code 1993 as amended to amend the provision of the consumer fireworks regulations regarding gifts of youth sponsored by federal funds. We have a motion. So moved. Motion by Mr. Uh, Lexi. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Pendleton. Um, any discussion on this? I have a question. Um, the uh, ordinance, the proposed ordinance, would uh, not allow fireworks to begin until um, looks like July or June 29th. Is that correct? That is correct. And um, that would uh, affect. Freedom Fest, a lot, I mean, what would affect the Freedom Festival and their ability to shoot off fireworks? It would affect the ability of uh, constituents to shoot off fireworks. Like next year, our, uh, Freedom Fest is probably going to be on June 25th. So, just something to think about. Any other discussion? You can always get a bit back. True, yeah, we can always amend it. So, would it be two days or would it be like the last Saturday of the month? And it's the Freedom Festival, it's the last Saturday of the month. Well, it would depend on whatever would follow the calendar because if you wanted to match the state statute, then specifically, no earlier than you know, June 29th, you can have the consumer fireworks June 29th and July 3rd, and then July 15th. Can we say the earlier of 629 or the last Friday of June? Well, the next summer, the last Friday is going to be June 24th. Uh, well, I think the limits are good. Yeah. So, if it was the 24th, you say it would be on the 25th, that would be. I'm just, yeah, I was just curious if um, you could have it only on the weekend and not the weekdays. Is that a possibility? Well, it would still have to fall into that date right. range as the state. Right. Have to fall. Right. We, we can't exclude it near the state. We can't exclude June 29th, 30th, July 1st, July 2nd, July 3rd. Right. But if, if we said the last Saturday in June, the last Saturday in June, and or the 29th. Yeah, I mean, we, we could always say the last Saturday in June and, and June 29th and are the, the only days. Again, enforcement's always going to be. The fire fireworks last month. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just thinking Fisher, out loud. Fisher's does have the same data screen fest. I mean, it's just a statute there as well. So it wouldn't be unprecedented. All right. Any other thoughts? Any motions? Well, I'm just. Chief, do you have any thoughts? Uh, we do expect you to have your, your police officers out in the early neighborhoods. Well, we say that the city celebration is the kickoff point for fireworks all over the Well, I, I think typically there's a lot of fireworks going off the night at Freedom Festival that are not part of Freedom Festival. If this ordinance passed as it is, would prevent that. And uh, I mean, legally prepared. <laughs> legally prepared. I'm sorry, Chief. 
You want the honest answer? Yeah. The honest answer is it's almost impossible to enforce, uh, especially on that night. Uh, our agency, it takes all hands on deck. Uh, we run the road at uh, shift minimums. Um, and typically they're pretty, pretty busy. Uh, it's a Saturday night. They're running with seven officers. Everyone else is detailed to the festival. Uh, we simply would not have the resources to enforce it on the night of the Freedom Festival. Uh, rest of the year, uh, yeah, well, I mean, we would do our best. Uh, <coughs> these, these types of ordinances are really difficult uh, simply because the volume of uh, events and calls that come in, the officers need to witness it. Um, it just becomes a very time consuming, tedious task for us. And that is the realistic answer. But we will obviously, if you guys pass this, we will do our best to enforce it. Um, I'm just giving you the, the kind of real picture of what, what that looks like. I appreciate it. And obviously, we understand the difficulty in enforcing this. So but we appreciate uh, your all's efforts and all the police department does for the city of Greenville. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the, the night of the Freedom Festival would be almost impossible. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm rarely at Freedom Festival that night, but I am out in the city and and there are lots of fireworks. So, all right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was not the last Saturday of the month. We have the kickoff of that. Yeah, as far as how long it goes afterwards, I have no problems with uh, you know, the ending date, but the beginning date, it seemed, would seem, well, we, uh, government gets criticized a lot for imposing rules that uh, it doesn't follow. And while this isn't that case, if we're going to shoot off fireworks in the city on a particular night and we tell citizens they can't, uh, you know. I'll make that amendment to say the earlier of the last Saturday in June of March 629. Okay. Then we have a motion to amend ordinance 2131. Uh, as Mr. Lexi just stated, we have a second, second by Mr. Hill. Any discussion on the motion to amend ordinance 2131? I'm sorry, 2119. I'll get it right. 2129. <laughs> I'll get it right. We have a motion to amend ordinance 2129. And a second. Any discussion on the motion to amend? Hearing that in roll call on the amendment to ordinance 2129. Campbell. Aye. Dine. Nay. Gibson. Aye. Bill. Aye. Hopper. Aye. Lexi. Aye. Pendleton. Nay. And Bates. Aye. Ordinance 2129 is amended on a vote of six to two. Any further discussion on Ordinance 2129 as amended? Yeah, Mr. President, if I understand this correctly, that as I read this section one, there's actually no fireworks to be uh, done on the actual day of July the 4th? There's extended on um, the 4th, so it's not included on that first. Right. Yeah. It, it, July 4th has extended time, so it's not part okay. of this section. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. And then are, are allowed on July 4th, and they give you a longer time span. Right. right. Yeah. And do we just not addressing the time for New Year's either? So sure. it's just the. Uh, and it's just a, again, the kind of follow state guidelines. Right. All right. All right. Any further discussion? Here in the roll call, first reading on ordinance 2129 as amended. Dime. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Hill. Aye. Hopper. Nay. Lexi. Aye. Pendleton. Aye. Bates. Aye. And Campbell. Aye. Ordinance 2129 passes. Uh, as amended, passes first reading seven to one. Ordinance 2131. 
And on this vacated flat at Sanitary Sewer and Drainage and Utility Easements located within the reef flat of Fort Crofton Commercial Subdivision, sponsored by Campbell. We have a motion. So motion, Mr. Lexi, second. Second. Second by Ms. Gibson. Is this scheduled for a public hearing? So if you wish to speak for or against ordinance uh, 2131, please step to the podium and uh, state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Derek Snyder, Crossroad Engineers, 3417 Sherman Drive, Beach Grove, Indiana. Uh, here on behalf of Schwartz Crossing Development LLC <clears throat> uh, to present our uh, petition request to vacate the uh, some platted sanitary sewer and drainage and utility easements in the uh, Schwartz Crossing Commercial Subdivision. Uh, the, the commercial Subdivision is located uh, near the southeast corner of State Road 135 and Stones Crossing Road. Uh, the original plat uh, received uh, approval, uh, I believe it was in 2016, with construction of the western portion uh, and uh, an existing or a uh, retention pond at that time um, that was constructed in 2017-2018. Uh, following that approval, uh, the developer uh, opted to replat uh, the remaining 50 acres and uh, replat the entire property into one commercial subdivision. Uh, consisting of 100 acres. Um, the project went through outside plan review and staff review through planning and engineering and received approvals uh, in 2019. Since that time, uh, the project was put on hold uh, for various reasons. Uh, the developer now has a, uh, an agreement in place with another developer uh, that has necessitated the need for the uh, existing easements, which are vacant, there are no utilities uh, in the area in question uh, to be vacated to better fit uh, the proposed development. Uh, I want to address the, uh, the public uh, hearing comments. Uh, the uh, existing pond uh, is not impacted by this request. And that pond does drain west across 135. Uh, that pond was uh, constructed and approved in accordance with the stormwater manual uh, and the primary and secondary plat. Uh, so while I uh, acknowledge the comments, I just want to point out that that pond is not subject to any of the requests that, that we've presented in our petition. If need be, I have some exhibits uh, and a presentation if it would be helpful to uh, share that or I can answer questions if you have any. I have a, just a clarification question. Um, this has been favorably recommended to the council from the plan commission and the board of works. And if I read this correctly, one of the can technically, while we're vacating the current easements at the simultaneously, there, you're going to file another plat having easements in a different location. Is that correct? Uh, correct. We're replatting the eastern plus or minus 40 acres of the subdivision. All right. So the, the property won't be without sanitary easements. It'll just, you're really looking to relocate them. And the process is you have to vacate one to be able to have the new one. Is that correct? Correct. The condition was that uh, essentially this ordinance is recorded at the same time as the plat. The developers agreeable to that condition. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. And have you, um, has planning already seen the new plat? Know where the easements are going to be? Uh, yes, it was filed uh, at the end of June, early July. It's going through planning right now. All right, thank you. Any, any other questions? So, Mr. Snyder, are you saying that what you are wanting to do here and what will be coming before us later will not have an impact? Uh, positive nor negative on the building now? Uh, I don't believe the, that we would have any requests that would come back to council, but uh, for what we are, uh, for what we have filed with planning, it is for only the eastern portion of the subdivision, uh, which drains east, southeast towards Honey Creek. Uh, the western portion of the subdivision was uh, 
designed and constructed in accordance with the previously approved plan. So, uh, which, as uh, noted during the, the public comments, has improved the situation from uh, what it was prior to the pond being constructed, uh, because that pond does hold back water that was undetained before construction of the pond. It sounds like they still got the issues there, so I was trying to determine if they were they broke that. Uh, any other questions? I, I have a couple. Um, just mainly because I don't know much about the development as well. Is it comparable to the cables that's just north off of Smith Valley? The park complex. Uh, I'm not familiar with the cables. Okay. Uh, so this is a in total, it's currently a 100 acre commercial subdivision. Um, the previous construction plans have been approved. Uh, it was kind of put on hold. Uh, now, uh, <coughs> to facilitate uh, a proposed development in the eastern plus or minus 40 acres, um, we need to replat some lot lines, easement lines uh, to accommodate that proposed development. And so with the vacating of this sort of make or break the ability to move forward. Yes, I believe so. What's the location of this property? Uh, it's near the southeast corner of uh, State Road 135 and Stones Crossing Road. All right, any other questions? All right, thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against ordinance 2131? See none. Close the public hearing. Any discussion on the council for this 2131? Hearing none, then roll call. Ordinance 2131, first reading. Gibson? Aye. Bill? Aye. Offer? Aye. Lexi? Aye. Middleton? Nay. Bates? Aye. Campbell? Aye. And Dine? Aye. Ordinance 2131 passes first reading seven to one. Ordinance 2132. In an ordinance amending the 2021 salary ordinance, Common Council Ordinance number 2031, to increase the assistant city attorney salaries, time for five, Donna and Bill. We have a motion. So moved. Motion Ms. Gibson. Second. So Mr. Lexi. Anybody? Want to talk about this one? Uh, don't need to. I just didn't know if anybody had any plan. Any discussion on the council? I uh, I'm a member of the staff called Fishbowl. It's where attorneys get together to write about different things. <laughs> that, it's, it's a national app. And right now, it's a very hot market for attorneys. I understand the need to raise the salary for the assistant city attorney. All right. Any other comments or discussion? Questions? Hearing none, then roll call. First reading, ordinance 2132. Gill? Aye. Offer? Aye. Lexi? Aye. Middleton? Aye. Bates? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Dine? Aye. And Gibson? Aye. Ordinance 2132 passes first reading, eight to zero. Chairman, I believe that would extend rules for us in second reading. I have a motion by Mr. Bates to suspend the rules for the second reading of Ordinance 2132, second by Mr. Dine. Any discussion on suspension? Hearing none, hearing none roll call and suspension of the rules for the second reading of Ordinance 2132. Hopper? Aye. Lexi? Aye. Pendleton? Aye. Bates? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Dine? Aye. Gibson? Aye. And Hill? Aye. Rules are suspended on a vote of eight to zero. Without a motion on second reading, ordinance 2132. Motion by Ms. Gibson, second. Second. Uh, Mr. Pendleton. Any discussion? Hearing none, then roll call ordinance 2132, second reading. Lexi? Aye. Pendleton? Aye. Bates? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Dine? Aye. Gibson? Aye. Hill Aye. and Hopper. Aye. Ordinance 
22 has a second reading, eight to zero. Second reading, ordinance number I just have a quick question just to clarify. So, like when this agenda came out on Thursday, it already had the links and everything at the bottom. Yes. With that already on there, if that were the case any other week after this is passed, does the 72 hours portion of this come into play? Or since it's already posted, does that matter? I believe since it's already posted based on the amendment that Mr. Lexi made. Okay. It, it's uh for example, Mr. Hopper sent me a text this afternoon saying he would not be here tonight, which is nice for me to know ahead of time. Right. Because we do have to have five members here at the forum. The likelihood of, of that not being the case is pretty slim, but right. we do have to have five members here. So, yes, I believe that's correct. All right. Any other questions, discussion? Hearing none, then roll call, ordinance 2127, second reading. Gentlemen. Aye. Bates? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Dine? Aye. Gibson? Aye. Hill? Aye. Hopper? Aye. And Lexi? Aye. Ordinance 2127 passed the second reading 8 to 0. Ordinance 2130. And ordinance amending the credit card use policy to allow the city controller to increase by limits sponsored by Gibson. Do have a motion? So moved. Motion by Ms. Gibson. Second. Sorry. Same with Mr. Lexi. Any discussion? Hearing none, then roll call ordinance 2130, second reading. Bates? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Dine? Aye. Gibson? Aye. Hill? Aye. Offer? Aye. Lexi? Aye. And Pendleton? Aye. Ordinance 2130 passes second reading with a vote of 8 to 0. There's nothing under new business, miscellaneous business. This is the second opportunity for members of the audience to address the council, this time concerning items that are not on the agenda. So if you're here tonight and wish to address the council, please step forward to the podium, state your name and address for the record, or if you're online, uh, please speak up. Hearing none, moving on. Miscellaneous business from the council. I sent all of you an email stating that uh, our appointee to the Police Merit Commission, uh, which is Martha McQueen, um, her term actually expired back in March, and we need to um, reappoint her or appoint someone new, but um, we need to take care of that tonight. So, she be contacted as well. Yes. I would prove that we uh, reappoint. This person. All right, Mark, Martha McQueen, Mr. Bates moves that we reappoint Martha McQueen to the Police Merit Commission. Um, so, have a second on that? Second by Ms. Gibson. Any discussion at all? Since we have one member attending virtually, we will do this as a roll call vote. So, roll call on the motion to appoint Martha McQueen to the Police Merit Commission for another four year term. Campbell? Aye. Dine? Aye. Gibson? Aye. Bill? Aye. Hopper? Aye. Lexi? Aye. Middleton? Aye. And Bates? Aye. Motion passes unanimously, and uh, we'll let uh, Ms. McQueen know of her reappointment. Uh, any other business from the council? Yes, Mr. President, I would like to express appreciation and uh, thanks to Mr. Hopper for his Anything else for the council? I just have something really quick. 
Um, I know we're getting close to budget time. Um, it would just kind of, I was wondering if it'd be possible during presentation this year, if we can maybe just see sort of year to year comparison on, you know, what's changed, increased, decreased, specific items. All right, anything else? All right, if that's it, then moving on to other miscellaneous business corporation council. Yeah, no. Controller. Hi. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, everyone, and we are adjourned.